Good morning, New Mercies family and friends, and happy Sunday to you all. This morning, I'll be reading from Psalm 96, and it reads, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonder among all peoples for the Lord is great woo, and greatly to be praised hallelujah to the name of the Lord hallelujah to the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world for he is great and greatly to be praised father God we do bless you and we magnify you we exalt your holy name oh God and we thank you Lord for this day that you have made and we choose to rejoice and be glad glad in it God we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would be with us on today that you would rest in this place on today that your presence will be known in every household on today God we give you praise Lord for how you brought us through this week this month and this year oh God we thank you for life and health and strength oh God we thank you for peace and comfort and shelter oh God we thank you oh God for making ways out of no way God we thank you for going before us oh God we thank you for strength and joy oh God we thank you for lifting up bow down heads God we thank you for healing and deliverance God we thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost oh God we thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen God and we declare oh God that you have called it to be so that no weapon formed against us has prospered Lord so we thank you God ah, for your goodness oh God and we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy oh God and we thank you oh God for your love towards us God your unfailing God love God your unconditional love God your love that never fails God we bless you on this morning for you are good and you are great and you are excellent and you are the one and only true and living God who rests rules and reigns oh God I with all power in his hands Lord we bless you on today and we say have your way in this service oh God we say speak Lord your servants are listening we say minister to us oh God we say oh God I consider our situations and perfect those things that concern us God we declare wise counsel we declare knowledge and understanding we declare oh God that our our, our, our hearts are open oh God and our ears oh God are open God and we're ready to obey your word oh God we're ready to sit at your feet oh God and Lord we're ready Ready, oh God to lift up our hands knowing that our sins have been forgiven knowing that they have been removed as far as the east is from the west knowing that our salvation is secure oh God and we will spend eternity with you oh God so Lord we give you praise on today we lift up holy hands to you on today we magnify you and glorify you on today for you are good and greatly to be praised and it's in Jesus mighty name woo, ah, that we do pray and give thanks amen amen and amen hallelujah come on and start giving them praise hallelujah we give we give you glory oh God there's nobody like him come on start giving them glory he deserves the glory oh God you we serve you and adore you oh God in spirit and in truth I will worship you come on all the days of my life I will give him praise hallelujah if you know he deserves the glory if you know he deserves all of the honor come on and just give him praise hallelujah we bless your name oh God with my whole heart I will lift you up with my whole heart I will give you praise. So come on, if you don't mind, we're just gonna bless him. Come on, bless him with your hands. Bless him with your feet. Hallelujah. We will love you, oh God. With our whole heart and with our whole spirit and soul and mind. Come on, we're taking y'all back just a little bit. Hey, come on, give him glory right here. Come on, clap your hands, hands.
There's nobody like him. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty, mighty good God. You're strong. You give us strength when we need it the most. Hallelujah. If you know that we serve an amazing God, can we just lift hallelujah in the atmosphere? Come on, just whatever is on your heart. Give him worship. Give him worship. Hallelujah. We lay at your feet, oh God, because we know there's nothing like your presence. We need you, God, and we will worship you forever. As long as there's breath in my body, I will give you glory. Oh, we worship you. Come on, if y'all know it, say, God Almighty, Lord of glory. Take it up. Sing God, oh my. 
Say, God Almighty, Lord of glory, oh, we worship you. One last time, lift it. Say, God Almighty, yeah. Give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory, yeah. Hallelujah. We do come only to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, to give God the glory that he so rightly deserves. And when you know God has been good to you, even in your homes and this sanctuary, you give him the glory that only belongs to him today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come only at this time to worship you to seek you, to love you, to honor you, to praise you. And God, we ask in this season that you would just have your way. Do as you will and you desire. We trust you. And that's why we're here today. Because we recognize that there's no greater God than you. And so Lord, in the name of Jesus, touch our hearts, our minds, our spirits. Let us move in such a way that you receive the glory. That we will operate, God, in trust and in faith understanding that you are a glorious God. And God, we rebuke every demonic spirit that we're trying to keep us from worshiping you and glorifying you in our homes, glorifying you in this place called New Mercies. You are a great God. And therefore, God, it's no need for you to glorify yourself. We will glorify you, your creation. For you said that if we don't praise you, the bricks will cry out. And we don't need bricks crying out because we have a testimony in you. We know how faithful you have been, and therefore we would declare it. We would declare it amongst those who need to hear how good you have been to us, especially in this season. It is in your son, Jesus Christ's name, we do pray, and we say amen, amen, and amen. And wherever you are, let's give God a hand clap of praise, and let's bless him in your homes. And bless them in this wonderful sanctuary. We thank God again for this wonderful praise team. As we get ready now to go before the Lord in word, we thank God again. Again, I just thank God for all that are here, all that are watching this morning in your homes. I can't wait till we're back in this sanctuary. I, I, I said seriously, <laughs> I might need counsel after all this is done. I'm just letting you know your pastor will probably be on somebody's sofa uh, expressing himself and but I do trust God in this season. It is a beautiful season in trusting him. And I truly believe that God is still good. Now, as we look at this text and some things that I, I want to say, I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Uh, I want to read that in its entirety and, and just say some things that as I was studying this week and how certain texts just grab your spirit and just pulls you into studying and reading and seeing what God is saying um, through the Apostle Paul. And I think there's a word for all of us in, in helping us to see that there's something in you that you have to do and you have to use for God's glory without excuse. First uh, Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, it says, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm, in, confirm you to the end, 
that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I, I want to talk from a subject this morning. It's in you as well as he is in you. It is in you as well as he is in you. Amen. You may be seated. Those of you at home, you may go as you were as we continue to share and, and talk here. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I want to communicate to you that God has placed something in you, a gift in you. The Holy Spirit is in you, and then there's a gift in you so that you may do what God has placed you on this earth to get done. He has placed an assignment on your life that must be fulfilled while you're here. We must understand that all of us must be reminded that uh, the Lord is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. That, that God has empowered you for an, an assignment that you are here on this earth. That is why you, why you are here. There is something that you must fulfill. You, you are an answer to a problem. You are in Christ, and you are complete in Christ, and God is faithful. There is nothing that you lack in order to fulfill the assignment that is on your life. So in this season, we must recognize that it's all God. Everything that we're trusting to get done in our lives is it's all God. We must have faith in him. Along with God comes grace, goodness, and, and greatness. And that's what we must recognize. Along with that greatness come glory. All of these things God possesses. And understanding that God possesses these things. And that if God is in us, these things must also be in us. And regardless of our issues, because all of us have some issues. But we must recognize that there is still grace in you, and there is still goodness in you, and there is still greatness in you, and there is still glory in you. We must see this in this book regardless of some poor behavior that we will see in the Corinthian church. Because what God shows here and says here is that there is still greatness in you, and you must activate, watch this now, the gift that I have placed in you that each of you may fulfill the assignment that I have on your life. You are gifted and you must trust the spirit of God to use the gift that the Lord has placed in each of us. That is why Paul also says in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, he says, For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one measure a measure of faith. Now, what is Paul saying here? Paul is saying, listen now, you, you need to operate the gift that God has placed in you. Don't sit around uh, wishing that you were someone else or you had someone else's gift. There's a faith that God has placed in you to operate the gift that you have. He says, think soberly of yourself. In other words, don't sit up here and think that you're more than what you are. In other words, there's no reason for me to sit up here and wish that I could sing like Dr. Sam or sing like April because that is not my gift. And so I need to recognize that God has given me the gift that to, to minister to people, to, to preach the gospel, and therefore I can do it with confidence. That's what God wants us to understand, that when you have faith, that the gift that he has placed in you, that you can do it with confidence regardless of the issues that all of us have that God says listen now use that measure of faith that is inside of you to accomplish what I've called you to accomplish you are to work your gift and not concentrate on anybody else's what is he showing us you have enough faith to work your gift and as men and women of God Paul attacked some sinful issues in this Corinthian church in this text but he said nothing of the problems up front. In other words, he, he wanted them to understand, listen, now, before I start addressing those issues, I want you to know who you are and whose you are. You need to understand who you are so that you'll recognize that, listen, you are better than how you've been acting. You, you're better than that. And many of us need to recognize sometimes we have to be reminded of who we are and whose we are. We have to recognize, listen, your behavior does not define you. 
You need to understand that we need to be careful of those folks who always want to define us by our behavior and not recognize that there's something great inside of us that there's someone great inside of us. There, there's something that God has placed in each of us that is a benefit to this world and watch this also to the body of Christ. So he reminds them of their greatness. So these are some things that we need to consider to remind us who we are and whose we are. So number one, Paul says, listen, you have a new address. You have a new address. There's, you, you, you have a new address. He, he, he says in verses 1 through 3, he says, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Thank God for his will. And Sosthenes, our brother, listen, he says, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ, set apart in Christ, called to be his saints. Listen, with all who in every, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are sanctified, in Jesus Christ or in Christ Jesus, when you are in Christ, you have a new address. The word here that, that, that Paul is showing us in the Greek language when, it called, when he speaks to the church, the word church here in the Greek language means a called out people. It is the assembly. It is of decision-making saints of God, listen now, in Corinth. In other words, as men and women of God, those of us who are in the church, we need to recognize in Liburn, in Atlanta, in Detroit, in New York, wherever you might be, you need to recognize that you are decision-making men and women of God. You're, you're not sitting around trying to figure things out. That You're not sitting around just letting things happen. You're a person of decision-making. And that's what we need to understand because sometimes people will bring you an issue and bring you a problem, and they want you to just sit on it. You need to understand that you're beyond sitting on on things once you have prayed about it and thought about it it's time to make a decision you are a decision maker and you are making decisions that impact your life and impact the life of others and also impact the kingdom of God and once you get saved or got saved as the church listen now and immediately address address change that there was something that changed inside of you you have your local address of your home you have your local address of the assembly, the place where you worship, the church, the, the, the corporate body that you come to called New Mercies, and those of you that go to other homes, and you have a spiritual address, a new address in Christ. You receive the new address because you are a new person in Jesus Christ. The church is made up, here's the challenge, of imperfect people who God calls saints. And these are men and women who have been sanctified, set apart by God, for God. Now, let me say that again now. See, you're, you're not your own anymore. You now belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, God sets you aside for his use. In other words, you're not to do what you want to do anymore. When you know, watch this now, who you are and whose you are, we are not allowed, listen now, to treat others any kind of way. And we're not to allow others to treat us any kind of way. One of the things that I, I love to say is that, listen, treat people like you want to be treated. And when you know who you are in Christ, listen now, you won't let people treat you any kind of way because you recognize that you are a difference maker. You're a decision maker. And as men and women of God, you are alive in Christ. And you no longer live in sin. You now live in Christ. You're no longer dead in your sins. You're alive to Christ. You are a true believer, and therefore, you dwell at a different address now. And because you have a different address, you no longer live in the past. You no longer live in your sins. You no longer live in your mistakes. You live for the glory of God. You're not hanging in the strip clubs. Yeah. Mm. That's both men and women. 
You're no longer just hanging on the corners. You, you're making decisions now. You're, you're doing something that makes a difference in your life and in the lives of others. You, you are a decision maker. And the decisions that you make are to be impactful for the kingdom of God. And since you don't live in those old places, you don't allow people to treat you with that old nature. You don't allow them to call you by your old names. You, you're no longer a player. You're no longer sneaky. You're no longer a liar. You're no longer pooky. You, you are someone that is glorious in Christ and Christ inside of you. And you're no longer looking for treat thrills. And you know who you are. Now you're the real deal. You're walking in the power of God. And this is something that you need to recognize. You're a person full of purpose, making a difference and making change. That's who you are. That's why the scripture says in Romans chapter 6, verse 4, therefore we, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so even we also shall walk in the newness of life. That old stuff is in the grave. And because you are alive in Christ, live folks don't hang out in the cemetery. You don't hang out in dead places. You, you, you left that address. You, you now have a new kingdom address. You are in Christ. Christ is on the right hand of the Father. And therefore, now you have a kingdom mindset in the things in which God has called you to do. You have a new address in Christ. The second thing that we find here is that you have what you need to complete your assignment successfully. You have what you need to complete your assignment successfully. Paul says in verse 4, he says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. There it is, verse 5, he says, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was conformed in you, so that you come short in no get. You might want to underline or highlight that in whatever particular Bible you might use eagerly awaiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that Christ is going to return. We're eagerly waiting on that revelation, but understand what he says here because you have what you need. When you give your life to Jesus, God gives you what you need to succeed in your walk as a believer. We need to understand that, listen now, that while you're operating in the gift that God has given to you as a believer, God has given you everything you need to walk in that particular gift and to, watch this, complete the assignment that God has placed on your life. The grace of God was given to the church and it did not lack any spiritual gift so that it would succeed in his mission to reach the lost and economically make a difference in Corinth, no different than today's church. We need to recognize every gift that God gives us, that it is to make sure that we fulfill the assignment that God has placed on our lives to make a difference within the community that God has assigned us to. So therefore, listen now, as an individual church, because you are the church, and as the corporate church, we lack nothing, and therefore we can, we can fulfill the assignment that God has placed on us. We must, we must start by saying, listen now, we have everything we need to succeed in the plan that God has for our lives. Now, understand that as a man of God and a woman of God, you need to stop talking about what you don't have and start recognizing what you do have because what you do have is more valuable and more powerful than what you don't have. That's what we need to understand. The word here used, listen now, in verse 5 is the word enrich. That word enrich is, is which gives us the English word plutocrat. 
The plutocrat is a very wealthy person. If you, read, if you you listen, this is something you need to recognize in the spirit here. You may feel like you're running low, but you need to recognize you ain't bankrupt. You need to recognize that you are rich in Christ and you have everything that you need to operate in what God has called you to operate in. In other words, the power is in you. The grace of God has been given to you. You are a plutocrat. You have the wealth of God, the spirit of God, the power of God, the grace grace of God, the goodness of God, the greatness of God, everything that you need is inside of you. That's why Ephesians 1 and 3 says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus or in Christ. Listen, individually, you got it. Corporately, as new mercies, we have it. The flow of spiritual gifts indicates that God's grace he has made available to the church. And you and I are the church. And understand this now. Even in your home, New Mercies, you, you are the church. Whether we're here in this body together, in this one building at 4,005 for stricken or not, you are still the church. You cannot wait till you come back into the building and sing in the heavenly language. You got to sing it in your home. You cannot wait till you come back in the building and pray. You got to pray at home. You can't wait till you come back in the building and lift your hands and worship. You got to lift them at home. You cannot wait till you get in the building and lay hands on the sick. You got to lay hands on the sick at home. You got to give, use them in your home. Why? Because you are the church. We can't wait till we get back to the building to exercise the gift. You got to exercise it at home. It is the, the, the gift is not based on the building. You're the church. Everybody in here right now, you're the church. And when we understand that we are the church and God has given us what we need, we must exercise that holy gift. We must exercise it and use it in God's grace. And stop looking at what you're not and stop looking at what you don't have because you got, when you understand the word plutocrat, that you are a wealthy person in Christ, you're not, listen now, you're not bankrupt. You got everything you need. See, the challenge is some of us think that the gift that God gives us, listen now, and when we see people use miraculous gifts, when they're healing folks and being used by God to heal and used by God to speak in tongues and to interpret uh, tongues and to give prophecy and we use just do miraculous things. We think, oh, that, 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 that must be a super holy being. We, we, we think they got it all together. Let me help you understand something. However, the gifts of the spirit and the grace that God gives us is not dependent on our spirituality. Mm -mm. <laughs> All of us, whether we are business owners or, and we're gifted to do that or those who use their gifts in the church, listen, <laughs> uh, God gives you those gifts because of his grace. It's nothing any of us have done that deserves the gifts that God placed in our lives. Nothing Pastor Kearney has done to earn the gift of preaching and teaching. There's nothing I've done that gives me the right to say I can speak in tongues and things of that nature, that, that, that I, I earned that right. No, no, it is the grace of God that gives us the ability to have the gifts that we have, the gifts of knowledge, the gift of wisdom. Whatever gift you, that God has blessed you to have, it is by the grace of God. That word grace there, and listen now, is a long definition. It is God showing goodwill, loving kindness, favor. It is the merciful kindness by which God exerting his holy influence upon souls, turning them to Christ, keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to exercise of the Christian virtues. It is the spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace. It is a gift. And that's many of us. We need to recognize the blessings and gifts of God are not based solely on what we are doing, but solely upon what God wants to do through us. Y'all missed that. In other words, 
word. It is not about what I'm doing and how perfect I am. It is about what God wants to do through me. That's why you don't allow folks to sit around and talk about what you used to do and where you're coming, where you come from. Thank God for, about where you come from, but I give God glory about where I'm going. And that's what I understand here. God uses whoever he wants to use. Grace is God's testimony of his greatness in you. Paul gave a personal testimony of God's grace and gifting in him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in trembling and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul says, listen, I, I, I didn't come to you, you know, with my back on, my shoulders squared and my back all straight. He says, listen, I came, you know, I was a little timid. I was a little afraid. But I allowed God to use me anyway. Y'all miss that. And sometimes we need to recognize we got to move beyond our fears and trust God to use us anyway. Why? Because he understand, listen, humanly, I didn't impress you at all. But yet you need to understand it was not about me trying to impress you. It was me making myself available to be used by the power of God. And some of us need to recognize we need, we need to stop trying to impress people. We buy clothing to try to impress people. We drive cars to try to impress people. We buy homes to try to impress people. We try to use words, try to impress people. Paul said that's not winning anybody, impressing anybody, strengthening anybody. He said, I came to you in the power of God. That's why you are who you are today. That's why you're you're saved today. I didn't come to you talking about the rings on my finger, the diamond on my wrist. I didn't come to you in bling, bling. I just came to you like I am to God use me. So we have to recognize inside of us we have what we need to fulfill and complete the assignment successfully that God has placed on each of our lives. Then thirdly, God is faithful. God is faithful. He says in verse 8, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul, Paul, Paul says something that is so powerful here. The, the, the work of God was confirmed in them. And that's like many of us. The work of God is confirmed in us. See, when you have a gift, you don't sit on the gift. You use the gift that God confirms his work in you. See, you... You can't talk about what you can do and never do it. It has to be confirmed by the Holy Spirit working through you to accomplish what God desires for you to do. This word confirm here is a legal term that refers to the guarantee that settles the transaction. In other words, when God says something, that settles it. <laughs> In other words, what he has promised comes to pass, has already come to pass. It's settled. And that's what God shows here. He, he confirms it to the end. In other words, no matter what we are dealing with or what we will go through, we have a guarantee that God is true to his word. 
We, we have the Spirit of God within us that witnessed the word before us, guaranteeing the word that God will keep his contract, that we are saved and that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to fulfill the assignment that is on our life. That is a guarantee. So as a man or woman of God, you cannot sit around and wish for something else you must fulfill what's already inside of you because it is guaranteed and confirmed by God that you will get it done until Jesus Christ comes back. So we must settle in our lives. Here it is that we are an elect people, a people who have been chosen by God because that's what we find, that we've been chosen. He could have, chose, he could have chosen any other vessel, but he chose you. The gift that you have and placed in you, he chose you. You are enriched. You, you, you are wealthy. You have what you need. You are overflowing with the gift that is in you. That, that's what that word wealth there means. And then you are established. You are confirmed through the Holy Spirit. That's why we need to hold fast. We need to stand firm in what we know God is able to do in our lives. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. God will do, my brothers and sisters, what he said he will do. He will stand by his word. It will come true. I'll give Fred Hammonds his credit on that one. But we need to recognize, as men and women of God, that we have to trust God because God is faithful. So we have to recognize it's in you, the gift that God wants to operate through you. It's in you. But most importantly, he is in you through the working of the Holy Spirit. And because he is in us, listen, we can do whatever he has called us to do. This is not a time for us to doubt ourselves through the ability of God and the grace of God. And this is not a season for us to be doubting God. But we're to trust him and work the gift that he has placed in us. Because someone needs your gift. Someone needs what God has placed in you. And listen, you got to find, find value in it because God has already placed the value in you. You have to determine, I'm, I'm, I'm living in a new address. I'm not what I used to be regardless of what people might say to me. I'm not that person anymore. I'm different now. I dwell differently. I hang differently. I walk differently. Because of my new address, I walk more secure now. I don't walk timid. I know who I am. And I understand that I have an assignment. And I will complete it successfully. And that's many of us. I remember a person, they used to always say, I just hope I finish well. As long as we do what God tells us to do, we will not only finish well, we'll finish strong. And that's what we need to understand. Then be mindful, God, I, I know you to be faithful. And if you're not there right now, I want to pray for you. Because that's what we need to understand in this season. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those of us who have given their life to Christ and those who will give their life to him today in many days to come. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, with the change of address that we develop a mentality that we understand that there is something you've placed in each of us to fulfill this assignment that you have placed on us while we are here on earth. And God, that you are faithful to do all that you said you would do in this season. And Lord, I pray right now that you would just touch the hearts of those who are hearing this word. 
that we would continue to walk in the grace that you've called us to walk in and not be jealous of someone else's grace, but God, be thankful for that you have placed inside of us. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch every believer, strengthen them to walk and fulfill their purpose. I pray for those who may not know Christ today that they will come to know you and that they will come to know Jesus and understand that all they have to do is ask, them, ask him to forgive them of their sins, to come into their hearts and save them, make a confession that they are a sinner, and that they give their life to you today. And that they will accept your forgiveness regardless of what they've done and where they've come from. We all have made mistakes. We all have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But thank God for your forgiveness today. And I pray that they receive it. And they will walk with their shoulders squared and their backs up and their head raised to you, giving you glory because they've been strengthened by the Holy Spirit. So come into their hearts and save them today. Encourage the believer. And God, I pray that, it, that they will call the number they see on the screen. They would text someone in the chat room to pray for them. God, I pray it to be so. In your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And wherever you are, give God a hand clap of praise. Bless him in your homes at work. Those of you in the sanctuary, we thank God for a mighty move of his spirit today. I thank God for you continuing to do what you do, new mercies, and helping us to be the church that, you're, that God has called us to be. And I want to thank you for your continuous giving and helping this ministry to continue to do the things in which it has been graced to do, anointed to do, called to do, as we are feeding the hungry still. And I want to thank God because the economy is seeming to shift. We're still feeding many on Saturday, but I can see the lines going down a little bit. And I thank God for it, even as I get reports of what's going on. And yesterday I was driving through Henry County and I saw their food lines dwindling down some. And I was like, God, I thank you because that says that things are getting better and I'm trusting you in this season. So wherever you are, give God a hand clap of praise for that. That is truly a blessing. That means people are getting their jobs and food are going on their tables. And, and I thank God for that. But I want to thank you for your continuous giving because we're going to continue to feed those who need to be fed and close those that need to be clothed and keep a roof over uh, some people here as we can. Now, I want to thank God for your continuous giving. So while you're on newmercycc.org, uh, make sure that you use the gift tab. While you are using your app, make sure that you use the gift tab. While you are on your phones, let's go ahead and use our cash app and go to dollar sign New Mercy CC. Dollar sign New Mercy CC. Those of you that love to text, go ahead and text NMCC273256. NMCC273256. Thank you again for those who continue to come and use the, uh, come to the church and drop off your offerings. I was in the vestibule the other day, and people were uh, dropping off their offerings, and uh, some are still using their ability for the kiosk, so thank you so much. And then those of us who continue to use auto pay, thank you as we continue to give and support this wonderful ministry. Now, I have someone standing next to me remind me of some announcements because they know that's the new word here. Listen, I will not do your announcements. <laughs> Come stand in the pulpit and right before I do a benediction, because you sit out there and wait on me, it would not get done. I'm going to do what I'm graced to do. My assignment, preach and get out of here. So these people that are standing here, uh, Jason and Michelle, they're going to share some announcements that you all need that will continue to do the works that God is calling us to do. And after them, I will come back and I will give the benediction. So let's receive some announcements at this time. Uh, good morning, everyone. I want to quickly remind all of you of our six-week summer Bible series that's coming up. It's going to begin June the 16th. We're going to be offering four classes, and I want to encourage you to go to our website, newmercycc.org, and register for one of those classes. It's going to be an amazing summer series, and we want you to be a part of this. Again, go to newmercycc.org, get registered for one of those classes. 
and all of those classes will be virtual. Good morning. I have just one brief announcement. On tomorrow, we will host yet another COVID vaccination. This is a Moderna COVID vaccination. It will take place from 9 a.m. until the last appointment, which will be 2.45 p.m. You can register at uh, newmercysvaccines.timetap.com. If you didn't get that, you can email me at msmith at newmercycc.org, and I can send you the link. If you can't remember that, then please just show up. We'll be here from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. It's for first doses only of the Moderna vaccination. That's all I have. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap praise even in your homes. Now, let me say this. On this Wednesday, there will not be Bible study because we have graduations that are taking place and y'all are not going to be tuning in and everything and and then we'll follow up with two more bible studies and then after those two bible studies uh, as you heard we will start our six weeks of of summer classes let me encourage you please make sure that you sign up for those classes uh we 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 our our teachers here are doing a great job in developing those classes they look forward to teaching every year during the summer and I look forward to it because I get a, a break. So, so, so please make sure that that you 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 tune in. And then those of you who need the shot, I know they say, well, everybody who got it now have already get, gotten it. No, we still need more people to get the shot. Uh, there are some who don't believe in it, waiting on whatever. I don't know. I don't know if you're waiting on us to get worse. I don't know if you're waiting on it to get better. I don't know what you're waiting on. But we're at this point now where decisions need to be made. You made a decision, I guess, not to get it, but we need to do it. If we want this to feel some form of normalcy, we, this is something we should do. I know I have even people that work with me that disagree with me at this point, but that's fine. Uh, at this point, this is what I'm going to stand because if we want to get better, we got to do better. That is my mindset. That's the way that I think. So I, I pray that you will come and get the shot tomorrow. It's available to you. Last week, I think they had 500 shots available and only 10 people showed up. 500 available, 10 showed up. So let's make sure that we come and we get the shot. Share it with your friends. Well, I don't care if they live in Kennesaw. I don't care if they live in Paulding County. I don't care where they, where they live. It's available and they need to come get it. And so we, we want to make sure that we all can get it. Amen. So that we can feel, I'm, I'm ready to take these masks off. I'm ready to take these masks off, but we can't do it until everyone gets the shot. And we need to do what we can. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for those who are tuned in and those who have listened. I pray, God, that you continue to help us to grow and for us to recognize, God, that the gift is in us to operate what you've called us to operate in. And most of all, you're in us through the power of the Holy Spirit to empower that gift. Thank you, God, for enriching us, empowering us, that we might serve at your pleasure and your will. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I love you, New Mercies. July the 11th, so come get the shot. Amen. See you soon. See you soon.